Let's talk about authentic reading. Tracking the details of the plot. Physically engaging with the text. Writing on the physical text. And as you read, making annotations about who are the characters, what are they doing, when are they doing it, where are they doing it, and why and perhaps how. Let's take a look at the first couple pages of A Brother's Keeper, and you'll note the details that I am annotating or paying attention to as I read. The sun throws a morning, so we're at the time of the day, light that covers the Atlantic like a blanket, all soft and warm. Out of the back window, you can see Egg Rock sitting in the middle of the water like a piece of God's sculpture. So I liked just noting that simile. And beyond that, on Massachusetts, North Shore, Lynn Harbor, and Marble, Marblehead. Fresh cookies are on the kitchen table. There's a smell of coffee. So we're in the morning, and we're in the state of Massachusetts on the shore. And suddenly from another part of the house, like thunder, another simile, the author is comparing the literal with the figurative. The coming of, a nor coming of a storm and a darkening morning. There's the terrible sound of the coughing. <clears throat> Gonna note that detail. That's him, Billy, the middle brother. So we know character, Billy. Says at the kitchen table, he stares out of the water and clasps his fangs tightly. He can't, who's the he? Keep his lungs clear. The threat of pneumonia is something you fight kin continually. He gets up from the table. Come on, he says. I'll show you around. We go into the bar area of the beautiful house in that hand. Here on the walls are the plaques and photographs. Again, we're in a different scene. Where are we? In another room. With plaques and photographs. So tell of the brief shining career of Billy's older brother, Tony... Tony C. Perhaps Tony C. is the he. Possibly. Here is Tony C. Young and lean and dark and handsome. With Willie Mays. Famous baseball player. So, hmm. Here is Tony with his two brothers. Billy, which we know already. And Richie. So there are three brothers. Billy, Tony, and Richie. Tony was in the big leagues by then with the Red Sox. Ah, the Red Sox. We'll note that. Billy and Richie were still kids, but they were ballplayers too. Here is Tony C. in a Red Sox uniform. Crossing home plate. He was the youngest American League home run champ in history. Even after a terrible beanie. Ah, we look up that word. It means to hit someone in the head. In 1967, that took a season and two months of, out of his career and nearly cost him the sight in his left eye. Tony C. had 160 home runs by the time he was 26. Those of us who grew up in New England in the 60s and loved baseball thought that even with all the bad luck he had seen, here are the injuries, broken arms with the socks, the fractured wrist, the eye. He was still going to hit 600 home runs for the Boston Red Sox. That was long before Tony C. and everybody found out he didn't know anything about bad luck, anything at all. So, interesting detail about that character, Tony. Down the hall from the plaques in the picture, a woman, new character entering chattering on almost musically non-stop you're just a big phony she laughs there's more coughing ah repeated detail 
a man's coffin. Hmm. You want to go out in the car today? Maybe we'll go to the mall. Dress you right up and take you to the mall. Billy says, that's Yvonne Baker. Now we know her name. We call her the Big E. She's one of his nurses. Okay. We got to go around the clock with him. Okay, so our illness is pretty severe. Then from down the hall comes Yvonne Baker, pretty wide faced black woman pushing a wheelchair into the morning. Seated in the wheelchair, hands forgotten in his lap, wearing a white t shirt, the pants from a red jogging suit, and white sneakers. No longer the boy from Swamp Scott who hit those balls. Ah, so it's Tony. Over the wall at Fenway, a 43-year-old man, that's his age now, trapped in his own body since his heart stopped beating in Billy's car for several terrible minutes. Seven years ago, unable to feed himself or walk without help, he's paralyzed, or say more than a couple of words, too much of his brain lost for good. Brain injury. Billy squeezes his brother's hand and kneels in front of him. Hey, pal, he says. How you doing today? He was a natural home run hitter, Billy says. Billy's own big league career, which had began with the Red Sox, was cut short by a knee injury. Tony grew up with one dream, hitting home runs for the Boston Red Sox. And then we get some stats of him. He was doing it by the age of 19. Young. He hit 24 home runs in 1964 in just 11 ga 111 games. He had broken his arm in the spring and gotten a late start. In 1965, he hit 32 in one home run title. By August 1967, more than halfway through the Red Sox impossible dream season, when Magic came back into the storied little ballpark, Tony had 20 more. He's 22 years old. In seven months, on the August night at Fenway in 1967, when Hamilton fast ball hit him in the temple and shattered his cheekbone, the Red Sox dream continued, but Tony's abruptly halted. Okay, it's 1967, the end. He'd been in a little slump before that, Billy remembers. Before the game that night, he told me, you got to get up to, on the plate to hit home runs. I'm going to stand a little closer and stand in a little longer. Nice little quotation about that character, Tony, to remember. Okay, so there are details. Here are a couple of uh, sample uh, quiz questions that might be based just from that those two pages. A correct answer question. So here, the Red Sox, and here are the other choices, and then... A classic, what detail is not part of the selection? So we know his heart stopped. We marked coughing. We marked 43 years old. We marked nurse, but not the NFL. So your brain loves to connect cognitive thinking, like reading, with physical movement, like annotating. And that's how you strengthen your memory for reading quizzes and in class to begin making associations with these details. Now, let's get reading for 